This is Michaela McLean, and you're listening to Beauty by Design. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for being here again. It is time to talk about the month of August with our best astrologer in in, in, in all the land, Ryan Marquardt. So happy to have you here and be back on our shit. Oh my God. A pleasure as always. As always. Well, I clued you in before we got started, but I have a special little, um, I guess, announcement, like surprise. Uh, very much in generator fashion, I realized how much I was not having fun anymore doing, um, batching gate episodes and doing all just way too much doing, doing way too much. That was fun at one time. And then you realize you're like, this isn't fun anymore. So I have decided that I'm not going to do them. I'm changing up the structure of things. And because I, I also need time <laughs> as we were both talking about, I need time and energy to go toward other very specific things. And so, so we're not going to do it. The library of season two is there. And so I decided, Hey, I'm just going to run through at our monthly episodes and say, these are the gates that are active and we're going to call, we're going to call it that. And then just kind of hang on to interviews when when they feel good or other things, you know, I mean, we're going to keep it loose. So anyway, Ryan sitting here, just nodding along and, uh, yeah, let me, let me run you through the month of August. <laughs> we're gonna, uh, uh, right? Whatever. We're going to start the month in, uh, gate 33. So again, season two, if you have the gate guide, uh, that's fantastic. Gate 33 is how we start the month. That's my North node, loving it. And then we move into gate seven on the fourth gate four on the 10th gate 29 on the 16th. And then we're into Virgo on the 22nd. That's gate 59 and gate 40 on the 28th. So that is the month of August. So with that out of the way, Ryan, let's get into it. Heck yeah. Um, so much going on as always. Uh, it's a, you know, rougher month technically than usual <laughs> i'm not i don't it's like who knows anymore i mean you know because there's always such a range of potential on things i think oh, um right. but a lot of astrologers have been talking about august as if it's like some rapture or whatever it's honestly i think april was like the crazier energetic month but mm -hmm. there's a lot going on for sure this month so i am uh titling it interestingly um for better for worse which i know is so cliche but as always i try to like talk about things a little differently than i'm not talking about marriage vows here but we right. are a little bit um love it so yeah like that obviously came about that's like my month monthly theme so we'll just like break that down a little bit first here where okay. i'm going and you it really does like show up a lot this month a very relational month i'd say um so obviously it is christian in its roots from the book of common prayer 1549 really goes far back and it's all about you know commitment through life's ups and downs for sure but um it's like got you know, esoteric meaning too, astrologically, very connected to just the idea of navigating cycles. Um, astrology is in ancient times was just like the art of like fortune and misfortune. Mm -hmm. And then in tarot, it's the wheel of fortune. It's mm -hmm. basically like this kind of idea. So it's, it is a big month. Like that's a big card. <laughs> and just that idea of kind of like fate having a hand in things feeling totally pretty important as well. Um, I think, you know, oh, please. I was going to say, and on, on, tar on the tarot card, it's like you have the four fixed signs and we are in a fixed, you know, Leo season. It's always interesting because you're like, yeah, there's that element of fate that uh, steps in. Sorry. That's so true. No, that's a good point. Yes. Yes. Um, I think I want to talk about it like first but through like a, a pros and cons lens here mm -hmm. um, where obviously there's both and everything. Um, pros is like that it encourages you to accept that life has both positive and negative experiences. And that, that is a fact of life. It just things yeah. go up, things go down, right? We've got to like be familiar with that. Um, on the negative end, um, it can make you complacent if you're really like 
for better or for worse. And like, you hold on to that. And there is a ton of fixed energy this month, by the way. So there is that like stubbornness and like gripping on. Mm-hmm. Um, it can really put you in a space of like, I'm accepting a lot less than I deserve. Um, and you can stop improving yourself, um, which is never really a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, ethically and morally, there's like this feeling of like a moral responsibility to staying committed when you've signed up for something. Um, so that that's a good element, I think, in a way, like I'm, I'm going to see this through, like, this is a moral I have. Um, ethically, though, it's like, okay, but what's the extent of that commitment? Like, what, what are the limits that you're putting on it, you know, because it's also a commendable thing to know when it's time to give up on something. I was just going to say, here I'm being Hello? like, I'm done doing that. And, right. But it's, but it's true. You got to know when to, mm-hmm. when to quit on things that are no longer it. Yes. It's so, and you know, you might realize that this month for sure, or you might double down on your commitments because mm-hmm. it's like giving mm-hmm. you so much value. So that can go a lot of ways. I think the balance that moral and ethical side of things though it's really about uh trying to look at self-preservation and your own sense of autonomy but then also mutual respect and reciprocity Mm -hmm. um and a care and concern for other people you know Mm -hmm. um so i've got like three things i want to talk about one of them will be discussed like more at length but like the first one i won't really go super into because i feel like a lot of people have seen this but like eternal sunshine of the spotless mind um, really comes up for me this month mm. um, as, yeah, like a general, I don't know, inspiration. So maybe watch that movie. I actually, as I was putting this together, I was like, I really want to rewatch this now. Um, but it, you know, it's a couple, they decide they don't want to remember each other if you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. And so they go back to like get rid of their memories of each other, but it, they, they keep then repeating the same mistakes. Like you can't get rid of, memories even the painful ones right Mm -hmm. um and as they kind of fumble and like repeat mistakes they kind of like happiness comes with that they experience good times through their little flaws with each other to basically remind themselves that like oh yeah like even in the bad times like we had good times and the happiness is worth it and happiness and pain have to coexist and that they um they both have value and it's all relative no matter what. Uh, so I think there's a lot to say about this one technically, but like, that's kind of an interesting one, I think. And then it also made me think because of just the nature of like the mind this month really feels like it extends from last month too. I'm not going to mm-hmm. lie. Like it's some really interesting ways, like some of this memory stuff. I tried to not go too deep into it, like with the nostalgic side of things, but uh-huh. there is some of that. Um, so with this being like about erasing memory and how memories can be really, really strange, um, mirror neurons is a really cool thing. Uh, so these are neurons that have been like somewhat recently discovered in the past, like 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. And basically, okay, so this is, I'm just going to read the actual definition. It says a mirror neurons are neurons that fire both when an animal acts and when it observes the same action being performed by another. So it mirrors the neuron mirrors the behavior of mm-hmm. the other as if you're doing that action yourself, which I think is really interesting. They they observe, observe this in animals first, but why I think it really relates to a lot of what's going on this month is that the human implications for this is that it helps us understand the actions and intentions of other people. So we're not jumping to conclusions, which I think, you know, Mercury's retrograde pretty much all month. And mm-hmm. I think that's a big mm-hmm. thing that we do when Mercury's retrograde, we make assumptions and jump to conclusions. So mm-hmm. I think this can help you really understand people. But then through understanding, they there's a theory, I guess it's like contentious in the scientific community, but there are a lot of people that will believe that mirror neurons are the basis for humans having the ability to empathize, which I think is really interesting. Like, I understand why you're doing that because the same neuron is now going off in me because I'm watching you do this thing. And we learn from each other, right? Like we learn how to eat and why to eat because we're watching someone else accomplish this task and it's doing something in our brains. So there's this interesting connection that we have with other people outside of us and the things we learn about ourselves, but also them, the mirroring effect with all that. I think it's just really interesting. 
And, um, and I mean, they talk about that too, you know, when you like mirror someone else's even body language, how that helps to create, uh, you know, empathy and, yeah. and like a rapport between you and everything. Yeah, all that, all that stuff's so cool. Yeah. Even like, um, repeating what someone says, phrases, like, to clarify, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of that, like trying to really come to a place, I think of mutual understanding, it's going to be big this month. Okay. Um, Okay, and then the thing I want to spend like slightly more time on is really cool. Uh, so there is a comic strip called For Better or For Worse. I remember this. I used to yeah, always read the huge. comics. Yeah, okay. it's like worldwide, like a yeah. biggie. Um, and so I was like, where I, is he going with this? <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Promise, it's like good. I love it. Um, okay, so it's by Lynn Johnston is her name. This is a really cool comic because it's ran for a long time. It started in 1979 yeah. and she technically ended it in 2008. And then since then, there have been like reprints of it. Okay. Um, before she started it, she got married to this man named Rod and they had a relationship for basically the duration of this uh, comic strip. And the characters in the comic strip, like what is a signature feature of it is that they aged like throughout the life cycle of this comic. So you literally watch these characters grow up as you grew up, as Lynn grew up, as she went through her own life experiences with her kids and her husband. She basically reflected them. It wasn't like exact, but she really um, put a serious human experience into her comics. And so it's really interesting with this theme for better for worse it's like no matter what happens you're gonna stick it out you're gonna stay mm -hmm. committed right mm -hmm. and so it really shows through the changing circumstances good and bad and as these characters age and the different things that we go through and that ways relationship itself will change over time that there's still this commitment to making it work right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really interesting um I think like there's such meta stuff with this too, like how the uh, commitment readers had to this comic strip, like mm -hmm. they loved looking at it. And so there were like co controversial storylines in here that like people were personally affected by when they would happen because um, she didn't shy away from stuff. Like one of her, her friends in real life came out and she turned one of the characters in the comics gay and had a whole coming out story, which started a bunch of readers getting really pissed off because they felt like that was like a, like, you know, betrayal, basically. Right. It's kind of the word I'm going to purposefully use here, but a okay. little bit of a betrayal to like their values. And, and like, that was like a twist in the relationship her readers had with her and with her work. Uh huh. And it's like, are you going to stick it out or not? Is, are you with me and my project? for better or for worse or not. Right. Um, and then same with like the the family dog, 14 years in, she killed oh. the dog off. <laughs> I know. And so she was friends with the guy who wrote Peanuts. I forget his name. Charles Schultz. Um, yes, yes, yeah, yes. And so she had like tipped him off that she was going to kill off the dog. And he literally threatened to kill Snoopy. She was, He was like that affected. He was like, you cannot kill the dog. Like what? And so oh, obviously he was joking. Right. And she was like, okay, I'm not going to tell you when I'm, when I'm getting rid of the dog. But that was another big one. And like, there were all these people, like she said, thousands of people emailed her. And like, a lot of them were like upset that the dog, yeah. was dead, you know, and it's like, yes. there's this relationship. But I think why this is really interesting is because relationships end at mm -hmm. projects end, right? And so not only did her comic end in 2008, but at the same time, her marriage to her husband, Rod, ended. And it's really interesting, the parallels um, mm -hmm. going on here. So like, I don't want to like be salacious, but because this is unconfirmed, but it's like kind of confirmed by various sources give us the is, tea yeah and i and this will interestingly relate to something else that i'm gonna kind of do a deep dive on astrologically as when we get there okay um but he uh oh and the mirror the memory thing she i forget what it's called but she has some disorder that honestly erases her memory so eternal sunshine and spotless mind like all oh, wow. this is so interesting that she like doesn't remember events like and so there's a lot of discrepancies in how she's like recounted her life like contradictions okay. really interesting stuff and so there's a lot of relying on other people to verify i guess events in her life oh thank god and she'd so been doing the comic all this time and basically kind of 
I know, but it was like loosely based yeah, on, yeah, you know, yeah. it's sure, like sure. just changed a lot of the storylines, like yeah. out, or outcomes or whatever. Okay. Okay. Um, but I, one day Rod walked into the kitchen as the account goes, I'm not like reading this verbatim, I'm trying to remember, okay. but okay. he basically just goes, I, um, I've been having an affair with someone else, you know who they are and I don't love you anymore and we're done. Oh. Ah, for better or for worse what you know and so this obviously wrecked her uh regardless that this didn't come from her mouth but uh that at this time a, re a separation was announced and then she ends the comic she said she was going to keep it going stay committed to it she ended up not very much longer then after the comic ended is when she officially announced that they were divorced really really interesting stuff um okay. I have a point in saying all of this like personal behind the scenes stuff because I just think there's an irony in this to name a comic for better or for worse and to be like, well, I'm not going to stick with that now that my life went into shambles to have your own relationship not yeah. stick out, you know, like to not be like working through that stuff. Um, not to say that she should, you know, <laughs> but like right. there's there's just that sentiment, I guess, here that I'm trying to like get people to think about um mm -hmm. and so along with this i want to say like how she ended the comic strip series is also interesting to me and like really beautiful so basically two characters get married toward the end of i think this happens over like quite a range of time but like they're getting married planning the wedding and get this the last comic was on august 30th so it was in August. So it just mm -hmm. like astrologically mm -hmm. this fits mm -hmm. so well. Um, and so these two characters have their wedding. Um, but the wedding um kind of gets thwarted a little bit because there's a crisis. Grandpa, Grandpa Jim has another heart attack. He'd already had one. And so the the married couple, Elizabeth and Anthony, hear about this. They go to visit the grandfather. Um, I think post wedding, they like got married. And then when they get to the hospital to see their grandpa, the, the step grandmother, Iris is in the hospital. And so there's now this moment between the step grandmother, the grandfather, who's like basically reduced to just saying yes, no, yes, no. He's like basically not in a good shape. Uh -huh. And then the, 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 the new newlywed couple. Right. And so the final quote of the whole comic series is Iris giving advice technically to the married couple because they were very touched by her dedication to Jim, even though he's sitting there basically useless. You know, now. Mm -hmm. And so she literally says, and this is clearly in context to the theme for better or for worse. Um, she says, it's a promise that should last a lifetime. It defines you as a person and describes your soul. It's a promise to be there, one for the other, no matter what happens, no matter who falls, for better or worse, my dears, for better or worse. And so I think mm. that's really interesting that she felt the need to write that as her marriage is crumbling. Mm -hmm. Choosing that for that to be the final sentiment, that no matter what it happens, uh, it, we're going to be there. And then it ends, you know? So it's like, what a seemingly contradictory thing to end on um because it's not enduring right but i think the like lesson here large lesson really putting like all this together for me is that human connection is cyclical in nature you're gonna have the ups and the downs and always it's just never ending in that sense but that the for better or for worse i think on a surface level it feels very time bound like we've stuck it out our entire lives together, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't, I think it's less about the timeline of the experience. And it's more about the depth of the love and the commitment that you had. So even though something you love dearly, a relationship, a project or whatever can come to an end, it's, it's not about the timeline. It's about the lasting connection that Ha happened like that's preserved even after a married couple dies technically right that isn't that they're done right but that love will always exist that was felt and so i think that's more about what this is it's like you have this ability in you 
to hold that level of love or commitment to anything. And even if that thing has to end, it does not negate the depth of that experience that will forever have have been and will always be what it was. You know what I mean? Just like her comic is still living on doing the same thing. Like her relationship mattered, even though he allegedly cheated. Like right. it doesn't, it doesn't stop. And so I think that's kind of like the big thing here is should there be issues with anything you love this month? Um, no, that's not easy. Right. But like, you learn a lot through it and it doesn't negate the experience that you did have. Like you, it hurts so much because you loved it so much and that love exists and nobody's ever going to take that away and appreciating that and allowing that experience to change you and, and to move on from it and grow from it personally is the purpose of relationship or yeah. yourself to anything. Wow. That's just really good. <laughs> Yay. It's, funny, it's funny too, because when I, when I read your notes, um, you know, and it was, it was for better or worse and the depth and it, like the mm -hmm. commitment, and everything. What's funny is that, that, it, that is the pairing that um, we will get to when we get to the Aquarius full moon is that it's the 29 and the 30. And that is one side of that is commitment and devotion. And the other side is depth. I'm like, oh, everything man, I know, I know, I know. So I'm, I'm going to save it. But but it's just like we're on point here. Keep going. Hey, okay, right on. Uh, well, I'm going to. Yeah, we'll move right in. So our first theme is always are the lunations, always. the new moon and full moon. This is an interesting one. Um, I would say, you know, uh, be very intentional at this new moon because it's a really pretty one. It's on August 4th and it's it's a great one. There's like kind of nothing negative going on with this, mm -hmm. this new moon. So set your intentions and do it on August 4th <laughs> because the next day Mercury is retrograde. Um, not, I mean, you know, not that you can't do anything in a Mercury retrograde. It's just, you know, you got, we're going to have some hiccups after August 4th, basically. And so you want to like set that energy off as well as possible. Um, and, you know, in a new moon in Leo, the sun and the moon are together. But the real big benefit is that it's sextile, both Mars and Jupiter. Um, mm -hmm. And this is, Mars and Jupiter are very close together. I think particularly there's a lot of energy then with the sex out of Mars, a lot of mo motivation and momentum that you're trying to get going with the new moon. But then the sex out of Jupiter is really cool. Cause I feel like it's like this expansion of your personal shine into the world, like committing to, I'm going to make something of myself here and I'm going to do it bigger than I did before. Mm. Like double down, you know, triple down on this thing that I know I do well, or I excel at. So I don't think you need to be biting off like a whole brand new project at this point. I think it's about what do you already love? What's, what are you devoted to? How can you make that deeper and expand it outward or uh, not, I don't want to say scatter it. It is a sex out of Gemini, but it's more like a diversify what you're capable of and, and try to excel even further at it. I like that. Um, that one, that new moon is going to be in gate 33. So it's right before the gates switch. Mm. And, uh, you know, I mean, so I'm like, hey, hey, girl, I get a new moon on my north node. You know, you know about this life. Um, but 33 is is a stop code on it's like the the end of, you know, I would say it's like taking a beat and pulling back and sort of like, you know, getting. Um, what do I, I always like to say. I like to describe it as like when you let all the little particles fall into place and then everything just kind of like makes sense. And it's interesting because when we were talking about the her and the comic strip and essentially sort of like keeping track, even if it's loosely about life and then being able to sort of retell it. So yeah. 33 is part of the collective abstract, meaning it's about looking back on the experiences. And then like you said, to maybe it's not anything new. It's just amplifying what you're already amazing at. Um, interestingly, so Venus will be in 29 at that time. So that one's about the commitment and devotion. Maybe it's to the thing that, you know, you're like, yep, I want to shine here. Um, Mars will be in 16. That's the gate of mastery and enthusiasm. 
and Jupiter will be in 35. And that is about progress and change. And actually all of those, those three, so where the, the moon is, Jupiter and Mars are all in throat gates. So maybe it's about speaking, communicating, writing, you know, it's, it's something about that. I am that, yeah, speak into existence at that point because yes. Mercury is not retrograde yet, you know, right. like it's still got that power for sure to communicate, right. be intentional. Yeah, absolutely. That's really interesting. Um, the devotion to it, I definitely think would be like, it's like a reclaiming of something that you already love very much and that you want to expand on, right? The Mars yeah. sextile is the... I mean, it's a separating sextile, meaning this that already applied right before the full, the new mm -hmm. moon. So there's the momentum behind you, right? Or the energy that, the what was the gate called again? Yeah, the enthusiasm. Mastery. It's, it's so Mars. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. And it's applying to the sextile with Jupiter. Um, so that, I think, is this, like, that doubling down energy in my yes. mind. Especially yes. to the sextile yeah, I, I I'm like all I'm I'm loving it because as I'm looking at it, I'm like all of these very much apply to my chart yeah, specifically, and I'm like, hey, yes, yes, good. you know, you're good. like we're we're hitting August, and and you know how I don't know, it's I saw a meme yesterday or whenever, and it was like you know me at the beginning of 2024, and then it's like some like ratty chihuahua that's like looks like it's really struggling like me you know now like and I'm like yeah you just get to that point and I think we need that renewal of commitment right to where to where you thought you were kicking this year off at and reevaluation you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and new moons being the time of like you know plant you know always planting the seeds but I'm like oh yeah no it's time to revisit like what you thought to like what's important now right yeah, and move yeah. forward on on that. Yeah, especially because we got a good amount of plants retrograde at this point. Yeah. And Mercury's uh, turn, like literally basically stopped in the sky preparing to fully be retrograde at yeah. this point. So there is this remembering that revisiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so that's, that I would say as far as lunations go, that's the for better, the for worse. <laughs> it's going to be this full moon in Aquarius, which is like not fun for a variety of reasons, not going to lie. Um... It's especially not fun because it's happening on a day that is like probably the worst day of the month, I would say, like August mm. 19th. Mm. Got to be real careful this day. Um, I like basically just listed a ton of aspects here of what's happening. But yeah, um, I mean, like, I don't want to like confuse people and just be like running through all these sure. aspects. But there basically there's a lot of there's oppositions, squares, T squares, a lot of things um that aren't pretty happening in, right at this point uh i think a big one is that it's in aquarius so in traditional terms uh aquarius is ruled by saturn saturn is a retrograde in pisces and it is opposing venus planet mm -hmm. of relationships saturn mm -hmm. planet of hardships right so this can be a full an awareness about a difficult relationship strain that's going on right or a culmination in a straining story that's been happening um, it's also financial with Venus, right? Or aesthetic related. There could be self image issues, which mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It would totally actually apply based on some other stuff Venus is doing. Um, and uh, I don't, the, the full moon itself too, right? Is when I'm, the sun and the moon are opposing each other. So moon is in Aquarius, sun's in Leo, but they're also squaring like perfectly, Uranus in Taurus. So there can be this like kind of sudden realization going on here. Um, sudden uh, news coming in or mm. sudden decision mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you make. Uh, the sun is conjunct Mercury also very closely. So the moon is opposing Mercury retrograde at this point. That's why. So then Mercury is also in a square with Uranus at this point. So right. it, that's why I definitely think that this is a news oriented or announcement oriented full moon, like a shocking revelation coming mm. forward collectively. I'm sure, especially because Aquarius rules the collective, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I would say, especially like with, Leo and the sun being in Leo, that has a lot to do with leadership. So if you're in a position of leadership, you could expect a, a shocking like rebellion of the people, Aquarius, kind of to any decision you make if you suddenly make one mid-August, like that affects other people. So just being really careful about 
how your actions and words can impact others around this full moon just doesn't feel great. Mm. I think if you if you're a cardinal sign, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, you get off easy on this. Otherwise, there's a lot of like frustrating energy at this point in all the other signs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. The this is the one that has the the 29 and the 30, the the commitment, the devotion, and then the 30. So the thing I would so 30 is where the moon will be at again i'm like i'm getting dinged by this is my mercury <laughs> getting dinged directly but 30 is uh it's a gate that's prone to burnout um and always burn out of itself and of, of others because it is very intense it's like a it's it's where all this depth lives essentially and it's emotional depth so you know mm -hmm. um and then with the uranus like in eight eight is like it's part of the individual knowing so it's like what you said about just sudden kind of things coming out of nowhere it's a throat gate it's like again verbal verbalization communication something something going on there um and like you said the words you know either it's you if it's you you know just being mindful of like how you're using your words um but also like who you're listening to you know, because this is this is like a very influential energy as well. And with that planet there, it's like it can, like you said, it can be sudden, it can be shocking, it can be be all the things. So um something that could yeah be very, very intense. Um, hundred percent. Um, I think that is very wise advice to being careful of who you're listening to, honestly, no matter who it is, and mm -hmm. also listening to yourself with the Mercury retrograde on the sun. That is like mm -hmm. the self talk coming mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. especially there's so much Virgo and Leo energy this month. Both of those can struggle with criticism. I think you're going to be the one that's most critical of yourself or you're perceiving the criticism harsher than maybe anybody else even means it to come off, you know. But I think no matter who you're listening to, it'd be like, at this full moon, it's like emotional attachment and objectivity are your friends. That's kind yeah. of the only way to really handle this gracefully. <laughs> I would I would also say too, with um the sun and Mercury and Mercury being retrograde, like you said, those are in twenty nine. That's that again is the commitment of devotion. And that one is can be a rough energy to have not I mean, those are beautiful things. However, it's always like, are you committing yourself and your energy to the wrong things? Like really this to me, full moon, right? Is like, all right, we are evaluating. We are being, we're being mindful of who we're listening to, your own thoughts. Like, where am I putting again? This is just, I feel like this is the theme right now. It's like, where am I putting my energy? Is that where it really belongs? Is this something I'm devoted to for the long haul? Like what needs to change? And I think a big one is just like, what do I need to let go of so that I'm actually creating space? For the new stuff to come in like you're you're literally like blocking yourself up uh-huh and yeah. if you're not accepting of like what you know needs to change or whatever that you're on a square can be a sudden like forced change on you yeah. you know like this thing's quite literally no longer available to you or something it'd be like working at a dead-end job and you're like i know i need to change or i need to look for new jobs but like oh the effort to do it or something is like so hard and then you get notice from your boss that like they're shutting down in 30 days now you, you're forced to go find a new job right. you know yeah yeah that's shocking news yeah. um but the boss would probably face a rebellion if that's like in the sense, you know, <laughs> like really, there's like definitely like a us versus that person energy, which I also think is really interesting because this um, full moon, August 19th, I'll kind of explain, I don't know, maybe, yeah, uh, is the first day of the DNC, Democratic National Convention, okay. which has okay. gone, undergone some like very big changes, obviously, with yeah. Biden announcing yeah. that he's yeah. stepping down, which also so like on point on with the, the astrology from last yeah. month like oh my god so much of what we were talking about last month the matriarch and like all that cancerian energy the women mm -hmm. which is not actually slowing down but the women not only coming into like power more at this point but also facing a lot more uh criticism and backlash now like getting ready for that you know right on, I, I feel like uh if you're i don't want to get political but like um the harris honeymoon phase is like a kind of 
phrase I've seen dropped and it just feels like in August that honeymoon phase is going away. There's definitely like she's seen such a huge spike in polling and mm-hmm. the Democratic Party has been galvanized, you know, but then in come the critiques and it's weird that the worst day of the month is the first day of the convention. Very much expecting something to go down at that point. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so those are the two lunations. Now we got five ingresses. Ingress, I don't know if we've been using that word. So I'm going to, like, <laughs> I think so. I, no, I think we have. I'm like, but, okay. but you know, whether or not people yeah. know, it's like the planet is entering the new yeah. sign. Yeah, it's a planetary sign change. So, which I just get tired of saying that, I guess. Like the planets are changing signs. Five planets right. changing signs. It's just like one, just five ingresses. We're upgrading the language, people. Yeah, you've been you've probably been, been here long enough. You're you're learning the lingo. Yeah, just like lunations. Like we don't there have we to go. keep like going super in depth on the lunations. I love it. Um, so there are five. One of them is one that I don't normally talk about, which is also me trying to go a little more in depth. I here, saw but I find that. it to be really important. I know. I, I, I think that. it's a good one. So first is August fourth. Venus enters Virgo. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Rough. Not I mean, her favorite place to be. No, it's her fall. It's considered her fall because her favorite place is the opposite sign. Uh, Pisces. Have it. Hmm. The best. You get the best. <laughs> and, no, and no wonder, like, you're such a gorgeous, like, graceful, aesthetic driven person, you know, like, Thank you. you have the empathy and sensitivity for others of all kinds, like, is just so prevalent in you. But oh, Venus yeah. does not have that empathy, right? So Venus needs some mirror neurons when she's in Virgo. She needs she needs to look over to the opposite side of Pisces and be like, "Really does? How are you doing, Venus?" Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say in general, this is also going to say like not good for aesthetics. Like Venus and Virgo is not the best for getting any work done, right? Sense or. If you are, I'd say it's small, small, small stuff, not overhauling or just continuing with things you routinely would do. It's fine. That's a good point. Yep. Just you know, your normal routine and little like tiny, you know, inc- yeah. you know, the fine details, nothing major. Yeah. Especially because I think it's a weird one, not only as Venus in her fall in Virgo, but like as right before she enters Virgo, she is now becoming visible in the sky again. So she's kind of been in the underworld and now she's getting reborn and she's getting reborn as an evening star, meaning like just after sunset, you'll see Venus like as the first star in the sky glistening on the Western horizon. And it's beautiful. And this is Venus's favorite space to be. She likes to be an evening star more than a morning star. Mm -hmm. And we haven't had Venus visible for a while. So it's cool that Venus is like going to be visible again. And in her favorite spot she's feeling herself she feels really pretty typically but not only in virgo where it's like oh like i want to feel pretty like i just don't right now and now i'm on display like well i don't like this you know like <laughs> i gotta change something spotlight. here and yeah you're like i was not done with that like diet plan and i'm not fitting <laughs> my, into that dress right now and done. i gotta wear that dress <laughs> yeah it's like I'm a weird feeling yeah and it but it does feel like abrupt too because right uh well right before technically she enters virgo so while she's still in leo where she's definitely feeling herself Mm -hmm. she i'll I'll say it later the exact day i think i think it's august 1st i can't remember august 2nd um but she makes a square with uranus and Mm. that is a like sudden like uh, I mean, that could be a lot of things, just sudden shakeup in relationship for sure. But in this sense, knowing where she's moving and that she's on display at this point, it's like a sudden, like, I don't look good. I don't feel good. I feel like it's like an actress, right? Like Venus and Leo, the actor. It's like an actress going in for an audition and thinking she's got the role. I am perfect for this. And then you walk into that waiting room and there's like 20 other people there who look the part 10 times more than you. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, no. Right. Like, not, like, really, it completely thwarts your confidence, maybe. Right. It's like, okay. like an ego hit aesthetically a little bit. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so careful with that. Um, that's that. Uh then the next one, I'm gonna like skip over that next one. Okay. Um just real quick, uh, just to run through these other three. Totally. Um, Mercury retrograde in Leo is gonna be August 14th. So it's already retrograde at this point, which I'll get to that in our next theme, but it's gonna. It turns retrograde in Virgo, and then it moves backwards all the way into Leo. So the day it 
ingresses in retrograde in Leo is August 14th. Um, we'll discuss that further later. Yes. Uh, sun enters Virgo August 22nd. So it'll be Virgo season officially. And, you know, I don't, we're already discussing Virgo through the lens of like other things that are going on. So I don't want to be mm-hmm. too crazy about it, but it's like, you know, that I always think of you now with Virgo because you always like put it in the back to school sense, which is so true. It's like everything back to school, the work, you know, the yes. routine change, the like yep. hustle and grind and optimization of things and getting busy and being productive and like trying to finesse your skills, you know, but mm-hmm. on the downside, it is the critical side of you. And the- yes. You know, um, then she's nitpicky. The the month, yeah, she's nitpicky. At the end of the month, Venus will leave Virgo August 29th and enter uh, Libra, which Venus will oh, leave Libra. Home. Yay. Yeah. And I will say, like, I really do like the way this month ends because while you might be, if you're going through it this month, the, the for better comes at the end, you know, like, so there's like a uh, payoff to the uh-huh. enduring of the hardship, you know? Um, so we'll kind of, I'll echo that again before I end this section, but I want to jump back now. So to the yeah. kind of like surprise ingress that normally we would never talk about it, Juno is entering Libra. Mm-hmm. Juno is an asteroid. Okay. We don't normally talk She's about the asteroid. Asteroid, asteroid like, goddess. Yes. 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 Um, yes. And she is interesting. Um, there are like four main asteroids. Juno is between Mars and Jupiter. Um, and so it's close to us. It definitely is mm-hmm. one of the ones that like, if you're going to ever learn astrology and go outside the main planets, this is like one of those first ones that you mm. are looking at. You know, I'd say it's kind of on par with Chiron. Like and we talk about Chiron all the time, you know? Right. Um, she's Roman, Roman goddess of love and marriage and kind of can benefit or can bring a benefit to anything you love or that you're trying to commit to. Right. Um, so I think this is interesting ties very much into the, for better, for worse, like angle here, what, and works very well also in the, uh, waxing moon phase. So I think this is really important that she's changing into Libra, the sign of love and relationship and marriage, that this is the goddess of love and marriage. And it's in the waxing moon phase, meaning after the new moon approaching the full moon. So uh, that's good. The bad of this is, well, before I get into that, I want to say Juno versus Venus, because people always get these confused. Like mm-hmm. we, understandably, like for sure. Right. Um, like Venus, love and beauty. And you're like, yeah, but they're different versions. Of- yeah, yes. very much. Yeah. And I'd say like Juno's a little more like specific. Venus is more, it's not even always like love. It's just, it's relationship and your relationship mm-hmm. with anything. And it relates to beauty because it's like your relationship to colors and shapes and textiles, right? Mm-hmm. Juno doesn't honestly care much about that. Juno relationally is committed, monogamous. Venus is polyamorous, meaning non-committal. Like she can, she, Venus will have hookups. Mm-hmm. Juno doesn't want any part of that. Juno wants the commitment, <laughs> you know? So Juno has got a little more of a traditional conservative yep. mindset, whereas Venus can be more progressive in terms of love. Um, Juno, I would say is more needs like relationship dynamics and Venus is more relationship preferences, your wants. Um, I would say Juno is unsexy. Like she's mythology related to her. It's like, she was jealous of Venus and other prettier goddesses. Um, Venus is gorgeous, uh, was revered for that. And so Juno is serious. He is that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Juno's a little more serious, rigid, focused, I'd say. And Venus is a little more pleasurable and fluid, typically. Yep. Um, so th- that's kind of how you can like break them apart. But they're both important because Juno is in Venus's sign, right? So there is more of that enhanced love relationship vibe. But then again, you got to think, okay, but Juno's answering to this Venus, which is in her fall, not feeling so hot. So mm. this is an, an interesting interplay going this is, on. This is Juno's time to to get in there and <laughs> yeah yeah and try to like Venus. wants to commit but it's like right. i'm not feeling like good about myself yeah. you know yeah. so she also rules like a lot of people think of i hate astrologers who are like venus or juno explains like your soulmate that's the person you're gonna find really and like that's just such a like hyperbolic way of putting it juno is juno and venus are the two wives like goddess wives of mythology like Mm -hmm. that's it pretty much 
uh, she was basically like if Jupiter or Zeus was like the king of the gods, she was like the queen. She was Jupiter's mm -hmm. wife. Um, but Jupiter was a playa, you know, and so he would cheat on her a lot, you know. Um, Jupiter kind of, she was already respected very much, like pre-Jupiter, pre-Zeus, um, and kind of was looked to as like the goddess of the gods. But then marrying Jupiter, she kind of like got thrust into that wife role. Like mm, that's, mm -hmm. that's became that. Um, Jupiter many times betrayed and humiliated her because of his infidelity. And so Juno also takes on the like dark side of love, which is betrayal, infidelity, uh, it can show commitment issues like that, right? And how do you balance or handle the balance of power in relationships? So she can be jealous and um, dissatisfied and vengeful mm. um, for sure. And in Libra, especially, it's like you're trying to have balance of power. You're trying to have equal give and take and yep. mutual respect. Be fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's hard because you might be experiencing some of that this month. Like, I'm not getting the fair end of the stick here, but I love this thing. And so mm -hmm. what do I do about this? Um, she left her husband, Jupiter, numerous times, but had like a bit of a problem with never getting out you know she always came back trying to make the relationship work so she can represent the like helplessness and the neediness that can come in in relationship too because of that right. kind of conservative for better or for worse this will not end ideal you know right um so my caution in august against you know juno and honestly Juno's going to be in libra until november so that's also why i'm focusing on this like but we're getting toned through a Venus in her fall. Um, basically, yes, be careful of anything that you love and you feel like you're noticing yourself getting possessive or trying to protect too much. Um, I think there's the element, I put this line somewhere else, but like, um, of like being careful not to fix things that don't need fixing and that you're not responsible for fixing, like, especially if you're in a relationship and like your partner's going through a hard time, but it's like something that they're dealing with like with their boss and you guys don't even work together it's like that's not there's leave it up to them you know like you can be a support mm -hmm. system and hear them but like you can't fix that for them um feelings of being stuck feelings of being taken advantage of or betrayed in relationship um definite codependence issues be mindful of that um on the other side it's like you want to be careful of that for you but also other people and you don't want to pedestalize other people or be careful of other people, you know, putting you on a pedestal. That's going to be something that can actually really annoy you with Juno in Libra is like, I'm not, I don't want to be above you. Stop like making me out to be like this thing, this God above you. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm mm -hmm. on your freaking level. Um, you also don't want competition with the partner. Um, and so be careful getting into that vibe. Uh, societally, this is also what really makes me think women are becoming the focal point. And uh, I'd be very interested in seeing like how the reception to Kamala Harris is. And similarly, on the opposite side, J.D. Vance, like mm -hmm. the Trump's vice president pick and how crazy he's been regarding um, women. <laughs> um, so women's rights, I would think, are going to come into the foreground a lot. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I know we got to like kind of move on, but then I like that Venus is going to help a little bit at the end of the month. She's going to move into Libra and she's going to like try and really bring some peace into any difficult relationship dynamics you might be dealing with. Um, I, have to, I have to say something really quick, you know, the whole way we're like, oh, and astrologers and, and, you know, like Juno representing like who your partners, my Juno is in Scorpio. I married a Scorpio. Just saying. Oh my God. <laughs> Interesting. My Juno's in Gemini and I'm so single. <laughs> um, okay. So the third theme is uh, Mercury retrograde. Yep. So you, everyone knows what freaking Mercury retrograde is. We yes. also discussed this in last month's forecast a little bit, yep. previewed it because Mercury was in the shadow period. Just to give you the dates, August 4th in the evening is when Mercury turns retrograde. Starts in gate 59. August 14th is the day Mercury retrogrades into Leo. And then Gate 29. August 28th is when Mercury retrograde ends. We'll start moving forward again. And it finishes in Gate 4. Um, so we got this fun little interplay there between 
Leo and Virgo and what Mercury is doing, you want to look at that part of your chart to see like where you can expect some problems to pop up. I think, again, it's it's a lot to do with like, how are you balancing work and play? Are you getting enough of both? Because of a lot of other things going on, I actually think it's a harder time working, focusing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that kind of like Virgo side of things feels like it's going to take over most. Um, I would also say a lot on your heart and mind at this point, but really struggling to figure out how to express it. But try to avoid not expressing like do your best to communicate knowing it's probably not going to come out well because i think if you suppress during this i think it can actually make matters a lot worse like you might need to point out something that isn't working otherwise that whole thing like could combust and you would know like oh, shoot i identified that problem first it could be a technology malfunction you know what i mean like i mm -hmm. noticed this thing was on the fritz at the office and now we're out of power for like a week and we can't do business or something mm -hmm. um and don't be shocked if other people have really brutal points of view, you know, that maybe don't mean it the way that it's coming across, or maybe they do. I don't know, but like try to not add fuel to that fire. Um, the only other dates I want to say really quick is Mercury retrograde will make a square with Uranus. And well, one already happened around July 21st and 22nd. The second one is during the retrograde, August 18th. The final one is after the retrograde, September 6th and 7th. So those three dates are going to be like an interesting point where uh, it's kind of like an awakening or like the universe trying to get your attention about something. Um, and it's disruptive, but freeing. Anything to add for that one? That, it's still hanging I, out in gate eight. Like I like I'd said before, you know, of course, those are those outer slow or moving planets. And, um, you know, I think the same still applies, like watching your words and watching who you're listening to and and all of that. You know, it's a it's a throat gate. So it's interesting what you said, because the gates that Mercury retrograde are occurring in two sacral, one Ajna don't have anything with the throat. Right. And then and then that like, mm. you know coming in with the, the eight, the one that actually does have a voice. So, yeah. Yeah. And all these things with Uranus, which is, you know, is getting pretty activated in not fun angles for the most part. Mm -hmm. It's really activating also that Jupiter Uranus conjunction back from April 20th. So there's right. a lot like getting like the much bigger storylines at play here than just August. You know, this is not in isolation. Right. Um, August for which I'm like, God, God, because I know what August 20th was for me. And I'm like, are we still playing things out here? Like how much further? When am I going to, whatever. Um, okay. So the, the fourth theme that I have is just, I'm calling it mid month mass. Cause it is a mess. Okay. Like this is a stretch of days where I don't like it. August 14th through August 19th. Honestly, she's, a couple, she's days a, before, a couple days after hot mess. I'm not going to run through every single one of these things. Okay. I just won't make sense to, uh, it starts. Okay. Like I think, August 14th is fine, whatever. There's on August 15th, there's another good thing, but like there's also bad things happening those days. Uh, August 16th, there's an interesting thing of Neptune and Pluto in a sextile. This is very rare, but it doesn't perfect and it's out of sign, but it's interesting because this will be huge next year. So there can be this like deeper foreshadowing going on, very subtle, but like if almost like just the feeling of like a bigger, something bigger than you is at play and like, while you're dealing with a lot of nitty gritty things this month, it just feels like it's all leading somewhere. Like there's a bigger plan at work. You know what I mean? Um, August 18th uh, is a pretty disruptive day, but a, a not a good day on August 18th to make financial or relationship decisions, I would say, or beauty decisions. Um, but you can get clarity about something at this point. So there, but it can be a realization or moment of clarity that I don't, Know that you love, but it's like the honest truth, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, August 19th, that's the day that the, all this is leading up to. Honestly, there's definitely like orbs around these dates, but August 19th, there's a four big things going on, including that full moon, right? Um, but the sun is also gonna be a square with Uranus, which can be this really restless feeling, like I need to change myself. Um, you need to be open to unconventional solutions at this point. Um, and Venus is going to be opposing Saturn at that point, right? We already talked about that a little bit, but that could be mm -hmm. like relationship strains. Mm -hmm. Um, the biggie at this point really is the Jupiter square Saturn, Saturn retrograde. So Jupiter and Gemini square Saturn retrograde in Pisces. This is like probably what I would consider to be the biggest transit of the month. Um, so it's happening simultaneously with so many other things, but this is like a here, a serious, like this or that, like, op 
optimism versus realism, expansion versus contraction, conflicts between your personal beliefs and then what you're limited by. Like, I want to do this so much. I believe in this so much, but I am fully limited by this. So look at your chart. The best advice I would give is where's your Gemini? That's where you really want to do something. Where's mm -hmm. your Saturn? So or your Pisces, that's where you're kind of being told, no, not time. You got to wait. You're not ready. Or you, like rules are going to prevent you from being able to have that room to play around the way that you want to, you know? Um, so I'm like, for me, I'm like Gemini's in my fifth house, pleasure, fun, joy, dating, like Saturn in my second house of money. Probably not going to be a good time for me to meet somebody and go on a date. Cause it's going to be like a very expensive date. And um, my budget's probably not going to like that. You know what I mean? Like that kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. So careful. Um, so we you now go back and say, so Gemini, the Gemini area of your house, you're saying you want to. You want to grow. You want to expand. You want to. But yeah. Saturn's telling you. Yeah. Pump Saturn's the brakes. You know. Yeah. Technically, Saturn's in like a superior position here. So, right. Okay. Um, okay. Not fine. Uh, I just, yeah, I just don't like this. Um. I, I'm going to throw in real quick too with with Jupiter. It's it's going to be in Gate 45, and that's like Bossy McBosterson in in a slow expression of like wanting to tell people what to do and run the show and direct everything. And Saturn being in 22 over in Pisces is like beauty and grace and all this stuff. But it's it's one it's that's where my Venus is at. And it's like it wants to it'll stuff down its feelings and like be quiet and not want to listen and, and all of that as well. Ooh. So, you know, this is so interesting because another big theme with this that I was thinking about was like with sort of Mars here really activating the Gemini part of the chart and Mars with Jupiter. I mean, that's huge. And the big megaphone there mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. is uh, Jupiter wanting freedom of communication and information and Mars mm. really helping you take action for that. So you'll find like, if you need to figure something out, especially with Mercury retrograde, if you're giving things a double look right now, I think it's like, you're going to get the info you need. It might still change a little later on, like in September when Mercury is direct, but there, there can be like access to information that maybe you aren't supposed to have. And I think that this would be a point where your access to something is Ooh. shut down all of a sudden. Ooh. It's hard to like figure out how to put that, but it feels like there's an information leak or something like governmentally, there might be like a whistleblower, like beginning to leak some information. And then like that gets shut down by the authorities. Saturn. You know what I mean? That, so. that 45, just you saying that because it's, it's the gatherer. It's like uh, gathering up. Yeah, that's you know, what, or it's like you know, weirdly, um, like on a personal end, relationally, it feels like if you're doing some like weird sneaky, gossipy kind of shit, and you're like stalking an ex, big ex energy this month for what that's worth. Also, you guys like that with all the retrogrades and Mercury <laughs> retrograde, especially in Venus and the, mm, okay. big big ex energy. So you may revisit old relationships or old relationship patterns may resurface, whatever. Okay, but it feels like if you're stalking like an ex on social media and like it's not good for you, you might randomly check around August 19th and you're now blocked or they've put their profile on private. If you're not friends with them and now you can't stalk them anymore and you're now like starved for that information. Simple, basic way of putting it, but still. Um, yeah, weird stuff. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay. And then the final theme I have is just miscellaneous, miscellaneous dates. I put them into two big themes though. Okay. So I just want to say this. The first theme is Venusian relationship struggles followed by relationship breakthroughs, honestly. So the first one is August 2nd. That's that Venus square Uranus. Um, yeah. Careful. August 22nd. I don't love that. Venus square Mars. Not, not sexy. Um, but then at the very end of the month, August 27th, 28th, 29th, beautiful, like good stuff going on. Honestly, even Venus opposite Neptune retrograde. I like because Neptune is retrograde at this point. So there can be this realization of how you've idealized something in relationship, but there's a softness and an excitement relationally, aesthetically, financially at the end of August. That's the for better for sure. And then the days of personal development that I have for you, there are three that I'm like, you know what, these are productive. Like you may notice some really big things about yourself, feel proud of yourself or something. Or you, if you don't feel proud of yourself, you can like do something that will help you feel more motivated or like a fuller person, I guess. August 7th, August 23rd, and August 24th. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. We like that. I like, yeah, let's go, let's go out on a decent note, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> a pro yeah. The end of the month. I mean, like, I know it's the first four days. Said Venus like, enters okay. Libra. Yeah. What? She's, I said, Venus is going to enter Libra at the oh. end of the month. She's, she's in her pretty girl era. Like we're, we're yeah. back, back in. 
in yeah. business. Which can mean so much. If you have a breakup this month or something, you know, by the end of the month, you're kind of like moving on. Like you're feeling better. You're back in the mood to like date again, all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. There's a lot, a lot that can play. And the personal development that's also accompanying at the end of the month, the Venusian stuff. It's like relationships get better because you're getting better. There's personal healing. So there's relational healing happening. Love it. A lot of stuff. Love that. Love that. Yeah, but okay. Just, okay. So we all right. We're we're armed. We're ready for August. Yeah. A right. lot to endure. A lot to endure. When isn't? When when are when don't we have a lot to endure? I know. Same. I feel like September is gonna be okay, actually. Good. Okay. I do October as well. I think like they're gonna be a little bit better. Maybe not institutionally, governmentally, but right. I think personally, it's a little better. November, December, a little bit more frustrating. Mm -hmm. Also, whatever's happening with the Jupiter Saturn square comes back in December. So just kind of clock that around what's going on mid. Mid-August for you, repeating theme coming in December. All right, mid mid-August, pay attention for a repeat yeah. in December. Just, just chill out in mid-August, August fourteenth through the nineteenth. Just calm down. Honestly. Okay, okay. So August fourteenth through the nineteenth, you just take a little break, take a little chill pill, just mm -hmm. go into retreat. <laughs> All right, cool. Where what's what's going on? Where can everybody find you? It's the same old, same old, okay. um, you know, ryansastrology.com. You find okay. me there. I've limited a lot of my calendar, but uh, yeah. I, if there, if you need something quick, somebody has recently hit me up about that even a couple of days ago, wanting a quicker, I can find it. I'm just like, kind of like not giving everybody open access to my calendar. But, so if you, but if you need something quickly, just email me. We'll figure it out. Love that. Okay, cool. All right. Well, yay. You know, again, my Super favorite time. Of the oh month. my God. Can I say something what? too, really quick? As yes, re repeats the last month. I totally should have just said this at the beginning, but I just think it's yeah. really interesting that this happened. It's personal, but like, uh, I, we talked last month about yeah. like the matrix and the family stuff. Right. And I mentioned yes. my grandma yes. was put into hospice. Grandma. She passed away. Yeah. So I was just home with family doing that whole family dynamic thing and seeing these like generations of where I come from and whatever. And she literally did genealogy and ancestry like crazy easy on the back of her head uh headstone is that what we call it in the graveyard mm -hmm. headstone is that what headstone. Call it? why is that feeling weird okay Grapes yeah headstone on the back of it is like etched a big family tree and Aww. when she passed away in hospice i didn't even know she ever had this but she had like, this huge blanket on her like in like final hours of her life that was just the family tree with like everybody's names on it and it was like how crazy is that that like that is so like the energy of what was going on that last month it, 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 it so is crazy. always amazing. I'm very curious. Pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you Super people curious. like you and I are always paying attention to this, but like, you know, when people really pay attention to the the themes of what occurs during each astrological season, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious if other people have, you know, felt anything, but like I, and it wasn't just me. I think uh, last month felt like it really resonated with a lot of people that I talked to. Yes. So yes. I'm curious. Hopefully. Yeah. I don't know. You're getting something out of this. Okay. And that's it. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. Thank you all for being here. And of course, Ryan, for always sharing your time with us. It is my favorite. Always, always. All right. Of course, until next month, next time, because your girl is, you know, taking her own advice. Um, we'll be back for September. All right. Until next time, have a beautiful day.